First at four, there have been two flip-flops in 24 hours in the controversy over Rashida Tlaib's visit to Israel. We have the very latest from the Detroit Congresswoman. And the winner is, we'll tell you who got the nod to replace L. Brooks Patterson in Oakland County. The heat and humidity are revving up once again. Will that affect the dream cruise? We're going to have the very latest forecast, and we're already talking to dedicated car lovers. Kim? The Woodward Dream Cruise starts tomorrow, but those classic cars and the car lovers are already out. I'll introduce you to some of those mega fans as we get the party started leading up to the main event tomorrow. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Ali in for Karen Drew. First at four, Detroit Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib says she's not going to Israel, even though that country was going to allow her a visit for humanitarian reasons. It has been a wild 24 hours. Let's go to Kimberly Gill. She's in the newsroom. And Kim, we know first Israel blinked and then the Congresswoman pretty much had a change of heart. Yes, Andrew, you're right. Good afternoon to you. A Congresswoman Tlaib said she wanted to visit her 90-year-old grandmother in the West Bank. Overnight, Israel said that it would indeed allow that visit, but it came with some strings. The Israeli government said there would be restrictions on what Tlaib could say while she was there. Tlaib and Congresswoman Ilhan Omar of Minnesota have both supported boycotts of Israel over its treatment of Palestinians. Israel says that rhetoric was a deal breaker for a planned visit and barred both Congresswomen from the country yesterday. Well, Tlaib made a humanitarian request to visit her family, agreeing not to promote boycotts. But this morning, it was the congresswoman who changed her mind. Now, Rashida Tlaib gave Local 4 a statement, and it reads in part, quote, visiting my grandmother under these oppressive conditions meant to humiliate me would break my grandmother's heart. Silencing me with treatment to make me feel less than is not what she wants for me, end quote. You can read the entire statement on our website at clickondetroit.com. And we also tried to reach out to Congresswoman Tlaib for more. Uh, we wanted to hear more about her decision to cancel the trip, but right now her office is telling us that she won't be commenting on this issue any further. We'll let you know if that changes, and we're also talking to her constituents to get their reactions to all of this. Our coverage continues at both 5 and 6. For now, though, Sandra, we'll send it back to you. All right, we will continue to follow it. Thank you so much, Kimberly. Sure. Oakland County has a new executive after an intense day of arguments. Ferndale Mayor Dave Coulter was appointed county executive in an 11 to 10 vote. His appointment caps a very turbulent two weeks of debate following the death of longtime leader L. Brooks Patterson. Coulter now must resign as Ferndale mayor. He's expected to do so at a special meeting, which is set for Monday. After his appointment, he took the microphone, saying he feels the county needs to work together. I understand the enormity of the job and the responsibility. I will need all of your help. I may not have been your first choice or your second choice or your third choice. Um, but I hope that you understand that it's a sincere invitation to join me in making sure uh, that we do the right thing. And it's been a day of controversy, challenges, and criticism in Oakland County. We're going to take a closer look at all that drama for you coming up starting at 5 o'clock. Today, a 12-year-old boy faces the man accused of shooting his mother, stepfather, and brother, as well as assaulting his younger sister. 24-year-old Daryl Edwards faces several charges, including assault with intent to murder. Prosecutors say he shot three people, including an 8-year-old boy, and assaulted a little girl last month. Today, the 12-year-old who escaped the shooting and called police described what he saw. My mama tried to lift him up, but it didn't work for a while till my mama did. My stepdad tried to reach for the gun, and Michael had said, no, you're not getting that. And then Michael had grabbed it and shot my stepdad three times. The hearing is part of the process to decide if Edwards indeed will go to trial. He will be back in court next month. A St. Clair Shores man has now been charged after prosecutors say he threatened to shoot up a popular cider mill. 29-year-old Jonathan Keck was an employee at Blake's Orchard and Cider Mill in Armada Township. He's now charged with making a terrorist threat. Police say he got angry after being told to work on the plumbing of a urinal. A co-worker told the owner Keck threatened to shoot up the place. A judge set bail at $100,000. Now, if convicted, Keck could face up to 20 years in prison. Thank <laughs> you.
It is a big weekend here in Metro Detroit as the Dream Cruise will roll down Woodward once again, but it's getting hotter and even more humid out there. Andrew Humphrey is here now, and Andrew, we're wondering how hot it's going to get. Certainly hotter, hotter than today, Sandra, but it is still summertime after all. Just got to prepare for it. Make sure you have those light and loose fitting clothes for both tomorrow and especially on Sunday. Let's talk about right now. We've got some sunshine out there, warm, comfortable, delightful as you head out this afternoon for an evening stroll or going out to dinner later on this evening as well. 79 in Pontiac, 79 over at Metro Airport. Doesn't feel much hotter than what it actually is. Humidity basically at seasonable levels. I mean, it's 78 in Adrian. Feels like 80, so not too oppressive. And it remains partly sunny as we go through this evening. Partly cloudy, I should say, to mostly clear. Temperatures hanging right around 80 degrees or in the upper 70s by 7 p.m. But there are some showers and storms on the way. So what does that mean for your weekend? We'll talk about that and and those higher temperatures coming right up. Thank you, Andrew. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his family out of the hospital at this hour after surviving a fiery plane crash yesterday. The NASCAR driver and his family suffered minor injuries. This was after their plane slid off the runway and then caught on fire. This all happened while landing in eastern Tennessee. The video here showed the family and the pilots walking away just after the crash. Today, federal investigators are there. They're at the scene trying to figure out what went wrong. We're also tracking some of the biggest stories making news for you around the world on this Friday, and we start in North Korea. North Korea raising tensions with tough talk and some kind of new launch. This is file video from its missile program. Today, the renegade country has fired two more projectiles into the sea. They have not yet been identified. North Korea also says it will stop talking with South Korea. It's angry over joint military exercises between its neighbor and the United States. The president, President Trump, downplaying the recent missile launches, but experts say they allow North Korea to build leverage before any future nuclear talks. World leaders are keeping a watchful eye on Hong Kong. Members of China's paramilitary police force have been seen marching and practicing crowd control. This is right across from Hong Kong. Protesters have been demanding expanded political rights from China. Some wonder if the show of force is a threat against pro-democracy demonstrators. Hong Kong's police force says it's not aware of any plans for Chinese forces to move in, but that Hong Kong's government won't speak with the opposition until those protests stop. The man being called the French Spider-Man has scaled his way into the crisis in Hong Kong. Today, Alain Roberts climbed a 62-story building. There he goes. The 57-year-old took about an hour to climb the skyscraper. Then he unfurled a banner with both the Chinese and Hong Kong flags. He's hoping for a peaceful resolution to the ongoing dispute. And it's still not clear if he'll be facing any charges for this. In 2017, he was banned from Hong Kong for a year for climbing another building there. Here at home, it's on your mark, get set, and get ready to cruise. Sky 4 live over Woodward Avenue right now, and we're heading into a milestone weekend for the annual Dream Cruise, and diehard fans just can't wait to get out there. Our Kim DiGiulio found their enthusiasm is already in overdrive. The Woodward Dream Cruise doesn't officially start until tomorrow morning, but the classic cars and the spectators are already out. In fact, some people have been out along Woodward since 5 o'clock this morning. You know the saying, if you build it, they will come. Well, if you bring out the old cars, plenty of people will get revved up. I mean, where do you go sit in a hotel room? There's stuff going on out here, so what the heck, let's go out here and watch. Some people even prefer the lead up rather than the actual event. Well, my grandma has a Mustang. And we come here every year, so we try to come early. It seems like there's so much gridlock. On Friday, when we come and spend the whole day, we actually get to see the cars going down Woodward, which is a fun day. This year, more than one million people are expected to line up on Woodward and watch more than 40,000 unique cars. To me, the whole thing is just exciting because there's a, such a variety of cars, not only classics, but you got the new stuff too. And I love the new stuff as well as the classics. And this year is particularly special as the Dream Crew celebrates a major milestone its 25th anniversary. You get to see everything that you, you, you can't imagine. I mean, there's airplane cars out here. There's just everything you can think of. Longtime visitors say the Dream Cruise really hasn't changed much over the years, except gaining in popularity. And why should it? People have been coming for years to watch and ride 
so they can show off their own vehicles too. To show off for the biggest reason and uh, to see the diversity, the difference of different vehicles you'll see out here. Last year I did 11 hours of going around, down and back. Just chilling right and I feel like jumping in the car and taking the ride up and, and that's what I do. The Dream Cruise is a one day event, but you can expect to see people along Woodward and those cars driving up and down Woodward all weekend. Reporting in Royal Oak, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Thank you, Kim. Coming up tonight at 5, we're going to have a dreams come true story. You'll see people enjoying some of the things that many of us often take for granted. New at 6, one woman's tribute to her late husband. Her dream cruise story will touch your heart. And don't forget, we have an online guide for you to everything you need to know about the big event. You can find it at clickondetroit.com. Still ahead, two popular social media sites are looking for new ways to try to crack down on offensive or false messages. We're going to talk about Twitter and Instagram. But first, he's selling a collection he's loved for 50 years. One man's struggle that too many families can relate to. These stories and more coming up right after the break.